this could be our longest adventure yet. So make sure you got plenty of coffee, okay? For those of you who want a short and sweet video, this ain't it. This thing, the stock speaker that comes with it, and I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it looks like it's probably in Oxford, sounds gorgeous. I love it. I'm afraid I'm going to blow it. It's really light duty looking, and it's, you know, older than I am. So, um, I'm trying to find a speaker that I like just as much as the original, and then I can just take and box up the original, and away we go. Okay? So, are you ready to look at the contenders? It's going to be a lot of them. I'm telling you, this is going to take. This could be an hour long. Come on, guys. Here come all of the speakers that we're going to try. Are you ready? So here we're going to start out with kind of the contenders from WGS, uh, which is where House Guitar Speakers, good folks in Paducah, Kentucky, uh, build speakers the way God Himself intended to, one at a time, by hand, by people who care. Um, we've got their Retro 30, one of my favorite speakers. Uh, it's a 75-watt speaker, and honestly, I'm not really expecting I'm going to like it that much in the deluxe, but who knows? Here we have their Black Hawk Almico. This is Almico goodness that can handle 50 watts RMS. Okay, the old G12 here. This is quintessential sort of Jensen tone. A lot of people like these in deluxes. I personally usually find them to be too bright, which is cool because here we have the smancy fancy new G12CS. And you'll notice this has got this cool, real retro orange basket. Oh, and this, by the way, is the new WGS label. But what's really cool about this speaker urgh, is this. Yeah, baby. That is a smooth cone as compared to the regular G12C's ribs. Very different sound there. So G12CS, that's going to be fun. Ooh, this one I'm excited about. This is their new little 25 watt one inch voice coil low powered speaker this has not been released yet but it will be soon I'm really excited about this okay here we have the 25 watt green beret this is based on an old pre roll uh, Celestian greenback and lots of people love these in deluxe reverbs I'm excited about this this that I want to try, um, since the 25 watts of the Green Beret is just barely capable of handling what the Deluxe Reverb's got, this is the, in, the new Invader, capable of 50 watts, voiced exactly like the old Green Beret. Difference is Green Beret's got paper former, this has got capped on. Okay, here we have the WGS 30 watt Reaper. This is basically a G12H. 30 anniversary clone. Um, I have a feeling it's going to... That's a, that's a very warm speaker. Probably going to be too warm for me. Okay, now on to the non-Celestian. This is an honest-to-goodness new old stock EV Force 12, complete with all the little, you know, stickers and stuff. This oh, is a hoss of a speaker. I'm not quite sure what we're going to think about that one, but I've got it, so I want to try it, okay? And for something totally different, this is the creme de la creme uh, of vintage deluxe speakers. This is actually a Jensen P12Q, and it, of course, has the original Alnico magnet, um, you know, the seamed cone with this vintage uh, dust cap. Here we have basically the modern Fender take on that. Um, this is the Fender Alnico replacement speaker. This is the one they're currently selling if you call Fender and ask for one. You'll notice that little Alnico magnet is tiny, tiny, tiny. This speaker weighs nothing, and that's always good. And actually, I've, I've liked the sound of this speaker fairly well. Um, one inch voice coil, very light duty, little worried it might not keep up. And speaking of creme de la creme, here we have a pair of what would have been in uh, the 64, 65 deluxes and uh, a few other amps. And what do we got for date codes here? Okay, we've got one that's a 64 and one that's a 69, it looks like, of these 
uh, 12T6 Oxfords. Um, this is basically the same speaker that's in the Deluxe, only uh, one notch up as far as power handling goes. And honestly, I've listened to both of these in other Blackface Deluxes I've had, and I wasn't that fond of them. So I'm not expecting to like them as well as what's in the amp now. And finally, the amp that is all loaded up in my Burris cabinet, uh, ready to go here, is the WGS ET65. I've put these in a lot of deluxe reverbs, and uh, I've had a lot of people that have said they really like these speakers in deluxe reverbs. I really like these speakers in deluxe reverbs. I'm expecting to like this. Will it be my favorite now that we've got this new uh, G12CS and a few other things in the mix? Hey, let's see. Um, and again, uh, I'm going to back out a little bit here for you to see. The Burress cabinet will be running in fully open back mode, and it is almost exactly the same volume as the Deluxe Reverb cabinet. For those of you that are going, hey man, if the cabinets aren't the same, this is like no good, it's null and void, dude, then all I can say is do your own stinking video. Um, so there you go. Uh, I, I think that's about it, man. We're going to get going. Oh, by the way, for those of you who have not seen my video on these amazing Barres DC cabs, basically all you have to do is loosen a couple of thumb screws and undo the little alligator clips, and you can change a speaker in way less than a minute in these cabs. Oh, and there is a back, by the way, that pops on as well, so you can have open or closed back. We, of course, will be sticking with open back for the deluxe sound. Okay, so when we come back, we're going to do... Uh, the original speaker, I'll try to get you, uh, I'm thinking, well, yeah, that little itty bitty guy right there, the original, uh, what I believe to be an Oxford against the ET65, and from there, hey man, we're going to try all those speakers out. Sit in, it's going to be a long ride, baby. Okay. How you sitting on coffee? Are you okay? <laughs> uh, all the disclaimers, this ain't about playing, I don't play that great, um, it's about tone, and I talk a lot. If you don't want that, go somewhere else. And finally, I'm going to tell you, I'm just using the cameras on my little, or the microphones on my little flip cam here, so sound is going to suck. Um, but every time I set up microphones, you know, it's like people on, on my YouTube channel give all these screwy comments. And, uh, you know, saying something like, oh, dude, you've obviously got the mic on the one that you want to win louder. Okay. No, man. It's all coming from the little microphones built into that little itty bitty camera right there, okay? Which, by the way, is about 10 feet away from the amps. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to do a few things that I like. And honestly, this is about me. Eh, you're just along for the ride. I'm actually trying to find the speaker that I can put in this deluxe so that I can take the stock speaker out, box it up, set it away, you know, to preserve the, the vintage value of the amp and not worry about blowing it. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to play what I want to play. This is, like I said, this is really just my demo. We're going to go through a whole bunch of speakers, man. Each one we're going to probably spend two or three minutes on. Uh, okay, here's stock. <laughs> exactly like like the original stock 67 except louder I mean <laughs>
sounds just the same. Again, I don't know what you're hearing through your mics, but to me... <laughs> maybe just a little bit more, I'm going to say, mid-range. You know, from like 400 hertz up to maybe 1.5K. Um, and the ET65 is, doesn't quite have that, that hump in the middle. It's a little bit more smooth overall. Um, oh, that's stock, by the way. Wow. Okay. ET65. Um, oh, wow. Okay. That, unless I can beat that, that's what's going in here. Tell you what, when I get to the very end, I'll probably put my two number one contenders, you know, up against each other. Uh, a lot of speakers to go, though, so we better roll on quick. From here on, I won't be talking nearly as much. Just playing. See you in a minute. Okay. Ready for a little uh, Retro 30 action? Stock 67 Deluxe speaker here against uh, the WGS Retro 30. If you read my blog, you'll know that the ET65 and the RET30 are probably my favorite WGS products. Um, okay, so you're stuck. <laughs> Or built into the cameras is probably eliminating a lot of this, but that is way, 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 way louder. In the, I mean, it's not a little bit louder. I mean, it's it's twice as loud. It's easily, you know, seven to ten decibels louder. Um, and wow. Wow! Um, stop. volume and spank and all that stuff goes, but I'm missing the organic, woody wooliness of the original speaker. So I'm going to say, as much as the red... Hey, if you want a deluxe and you want it to not sound organic and wooly, it, wow! That rocks! Um, personally, though, yeah, a little too modern sounding for me, man. I, I want some of that, that warmth, that lower mid-range back. Uh, so, to me, ET65 wins over the Red 30. Okay! We got another one coming out. How are you sitting on coffee? I mean, again, we got a lot of speakers to go. I mean, a lot of speakers to go. Uh, but right now, I have the Blackhawk, the WGS Blackhawk. That is a big bunch of Alnico beauty. Um, they're kind of spendy speakers at like 240 bucks. Um, but you know, I mean, that's that's you want Alico, you got to pay the price. So um, let's do our little comparison, shall we? You're gonna be so tired. Fuck this lick by the time we're through. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's awful when you like mess up sweet home Alabama. <laughs> Here's original. <laughs> It's interesting, man. It's like the Blackhawk has more top end, but yet it it's still really smooth. Back up. Back to stock. so far it's interesting isn't it you can hear the alnico i mean the the top end it's like it's like technically a little brighter than the speaker but it doesn't sound it because it's so smooth um okay uh next we're gonna try uh woo we're gonna go back into the land of bright with the g12 okay woo let's go again um <laughs> here is the wgs g12c that's a ceramic g12 against the um, stock speaker here. WGS models to go, the crazy EV force, and a whole slew of, uh, of vintage speakers. So, come on back. Okay, gang, I'm running short on coffee, so we better go quick here, huh? Um. Okay, now I have the G12CS. That is the smooth cone version of the G12C. It's a warmer speaker. Let's see if we like it better. Um, starting out the stock. Ah, uh, guess what lick I'm gonna do. Sorry. <laughs> I always hit that pickup selector switch. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
I now have that that new um, one inch voice coil, low wattage, lightweight. Uh, it is Alnica, uh, ceramic. I'm sorry, ceramic magnet uh, WGS12 that hasn't quite been released yet, but I got one. Um, and what excites me about the speaker is physically it looks so much like the speaker that's in this amp that I really like. So let's see what it sounds like by comparison. Okay. <coughs> That's the amp. And here we are going to that new lightweight WGS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
original there. So now we have the WGS Green Beret uh, in the Burris, Burris cabinet, and uh, it's also a 25 watt speaker on a paper former, but big magnet, all that kind of stuff, totally different kind of vibe. So let's see what we got. <laughs> Thank you. 
spanky in the right places and nice and warm and full in the right places. <laughs> So far, that was right up there with the ET65 for me. I'm seeing a shootout between those two. Um, whoa, isn't that cool? Oh, by the, by the way, before I started filming these things, I was uh, super gluing a loose piece of Tolex on my old Tweed Deluxe, and I ended up super gluing the tips of all of these fingers. So my plan is always bad, but it's a little worse than normal now. Um, and that's my reason. God, I'd be incredible if it wasn't for the super glue. Uh, what do we got coming up next? Oh my gosh. Okay, we've got the old EV Force 12. Big honking cast frame, huge magnet. I have no idea what that's going to sound like, but we're going to find out. Okay, so here it is. It's it's a, that big honking EV uh, 12. Man, we're talking the ultimate 80s technology. So let's see. Um, <laughs> I bought this speaker years ago and I've never used it, so I don't know what it's going to sound like. <coughs> That's the original speaker, and it always sounds so good until I compare it to something else. <laughs> it is, it's pretty though. Okay, here's EV. speaker in its own right, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's so weird. Those speakers look like night and day, man. One looks like a cyborg, and the other looks like, you know, it belongs on Leo Fender's bench in, well, 1967, I guess. That is so crazy. That's the Fender Oxford. Wow, and that's the EV. And let's do, like, uh, let's do this stuff. <laughs> EV, back to Fender. Yeah, the EV doesn't have any sparkle on top, does it? <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be different, but not like that. It's actually got a lot less sparkle. <laughs> go figure. Okay, so how y'all doing? I had to go make another pot of coffee. Okay, so this is something totally different. We went from that big, huge, like, late 80s electro voice, which blew my mind by actually sounding pretty warm. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that, and not that loud. So, but that speaker, man, it's a hoss. I mean, that thing, that cast frame, that huge magnet. I mean, it's like, I really wouldn't want to put it in the deluxe because the cool thing about a deluxe is it's a lightweight little amp, right? Okay, so talk about lightweight. In the Burris cabinet, I have now put that vintage uh, 1960, whatever it was. I think it might be 1960. Uh, Jensen P12Q. It's an Alnico speaker, little itty bitty Alnico magnet. Um, I forget what the Qs are rated. I think it's 25 watts, so just barely enough to keep up with this. Um, and actually, that is one of the speakers that did appear in a bunch of deluxes from time to time, you know, when Leo happened to, you know, get a deal on some Jensen's or whatever. So, And it is Alnico. Um, it's a vintage speaker. I mean, they sell for a lot of money on the used market. So let's see. So we've got the, uh, the stock 67 Oxford here in the deluxe. And over here, we've got the vintage Jensen Alnico. Hey, guess what I'm going to play? Oh, I'm on the wrong 
one pick, that's why I sound that way. Um, <coughs> So what do we got next? Oh, next we're going to try the modern equivalent of this same speaker. Um, next coming up is the actual uh, Fender low power Alnico that if you call Fender and say I want a 12 inch Alnico, this is what they're going to send you. Okay. So, first, got to make sure you get the cup. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's snooping. Um, in the Burris cabinet right now, we have uh, the modern Fender branded Alnico speaker, which I believe is actually made, uh, uh, I believe it's made by C, uh, not CT, uh, by Eminence from the label on it. Oh, by the way, this one, when, when I showed you the close picture of it, you saw an old Fender CTS label. That's an old Fender CTS label. Yeah, just put that on there for Mojo. Um, it, they don't come with that. They just come black. Okay, you ready? Start and stop. <laughs> same genre as what's in the amp, only it's one notch um, sort of higher up on the food chain, bigger magnet, bigger voice coil. And it's a 1969 Oxford, and this is a, to do a 12T6 that's in here. So almost the same speaker as this. As a matter of fact, these were stock in a lot of deluxe reverbs during that time period. Um, so it's got a bigger magnet, it's got a bigger voice coil, but will it sound better? I don't know. Uh, it's good healthy speakers, let's see. Stop. Yeah. 
seemed like were, <clears throat> strangely enough, I actually like the G12C. I was thinking it was going to be too bright, not with this amp. Um, I like the Retro 30, but honestly, it's just too too modern sounding, too much like hype in the top end and the bottom end, and not quite enough organic wooliness in the middle. On the other hand, the, the uh, G12CS had a little bit too much organic wooliness in the middle for me, uh, for this particular amplifier. The the Blackhawk, wow, that could have been it. Um, the Green Beret, that could have been it. The Reaper could have been it. And the G12 could have been it. Of that whole bunch, um, actually I think the, the two that I'm kind of going between are the Reaper and the, uh, and the ET65. The ET65, I knew I would love in this amp. The Reaper, a little bit of a surprise. Um, Reaper on paper it looks like a great speaker for this amp it's a 30 watt speaker, big magnet um, and it, you know, it's just perfect for the amp and it might be perfect for the amp so coming up, we're going to have a shootout between my number one and two uh, speakers, which are uh, the WGS Reaper, this is a plain Reaper not the Reaper HP, this is a 30 watt version, and the ET65, so let's see Okay, friends, here we are, the end of our journey together. So what's going to go in this old gal? This, I love this amp. I really hope to be gigging a lot with this amp over the next you know, 20 years. Um, is it going to be WGS Reaper that goes into her for these next 20 years, or... Is it going to be the ET65? Let's find out. Again, a recap. Man, all of the WGS speakers sounded a lot louder than the original. Um, a few of them really, really, really sounded great. But, you know, again, the two that, that seemed to give me what I wanted were trying out. That Electro Voice that I that tried, that, that, that Force 12, blew my mind because it didn't sound at all like I thought it would. Um, it actually sounded really good. I just couldn't see putting it in this amp because it's so darn big and heavy and honestly ugly. You know, non-vintage, well, I don't know, what it looked, retro 80s look. Um, the uh, the old Jensen uh, P12, a little, little too ice picky, um, and the uh, the sort of modern little lightweight Eldico from, uh, from Eminence. Same thing, kind of, I guess. And, uh, and as I suspected, the Oxford that's in the amp actually sounded better than the, uh, than the, the more common, heavier Oxfords that I've, I've seen in black faces. Uh, so, some surprises. One of them certainly was the fact that the Reaper is here in this uh, final shootout. I wasn't expecting that. So, uh, I was thinking the Reaper might be a little, you know, I don't know, a little too sort of dark for the amp, but it's not. Uh, let's see what we got. <laughs> 
I'm going to start off. Yeah, ET65. <laughs> gs4.com post your comment and let me know do you like the ET65 better or the Reaper better I'm going to have to wait man because I can't call it right now it's too close thanks okay so this is an update um, I, I turned turn the camera off and I started horsing around I had been playing everything just guitar straight into amp going for clean tones right because I always 
honestly, clingtones are tough to get, right? But the um, you know the, the grid is almost as much a product of the pedals you're using as anything else. Um, but I will say that this I think has has really altered my perception a little bit. So this is Deluxe Reverb uh, figure shootout. Actually, 67 Deluxe Reverb shootout. I've had a bunch of Deluxe shootouts, and this is um, with gain. Okay, real quick. <laughs> Can tell you which one's which, but I will say this: there's a red, uh, there's a Reaper and an ET65 here. Let's call this speaker number one. Say I'm speaker number two. comments uh, enough you know to kind of get a consensus if, if we get one then I'll uh, I'll disclose which is which but one is in fact an ET65 uh, and the other is a WGS Reaper and when all is said and done I can only put one of these in the deluxe so which one is it going to be oh my gosh please please y'all help me 